A typical rabies infection requires inoculation through a bite of an infected animal. It is actually the rabies-laden saliva which is infectious. And the manifestation of disease commonly begins when the virus infects a myocyte, or a muscle cell, and enters the peripheral nerves through the motor end plate, which is the junction of a motor nerve and a muscle fiber. Now, inside the nervous system, this virus is hidden from the immune system. To understand why, I need to introduce the concept of immune privileged sites. These are locations in the body, such as nerves, the eyes, and the testes, which limit an inflammatory response, even in the presence of antigen. The purpose of this is to protect these areas from damage resultant to immune cell antigen interaction. And in some cases, like with rabies in a neuron, the immune system doesn't know it's there. Furthermore, rabies doesn't elicit a response by disrupting or damaging the cell, allowing itself the freedom to travel from neuron to neuron until it reaches the central nervous system at the spinal cord. From here, it travels to the brain and replicates. Common sites of infection in the brain include the hippocampus, limbic system, medulla, and cerebellum. The CNS is also an immune privileged site because of the blood-brain barrier. This barrier tightly restricts the movement of chemical compounds and cells into the central nervous system, so immune responses here are also minimal. Therefore, rabies infection within the brain is not contained, so it continues to migrate, making its way via the parasympathetic nervous system to multiple locations outside of the CNS, a process known as centrifugal spread. 